OK, thanks, Mike. This is London 102. It's pain. You remember Mr. Holland, don't you? Becky. Hello. How are you feeling? Nervous. No need. You're in the hands of a professional. Twice in one week. Who's a lucky client, then? Shall we, um... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm? Village person. What did she mean, twice in one week? Uh, yeah, odd that, wasn't it? Please don't tell me you tried to sleep with her. Please don't tell me you tried to Laura, sleep with her. Laura, her husband is citing her habitual infidelity in their divorce case. Of course I tried to sleep with her. Oh. I have to find out if our client's telling the truth. Be unethical not to. And is she? <laughs> oh. Your client, Mr. Wooden Fitzpain, claims that Becky here, Mrs. Wooden Fitzpain, only ever married him for his money. And that since that day, she has not only withheld her affections, but actively sought those affections from other men. Apart from the shaky testimony of six individuals with pound signs for eyes. Seven. What real evidence do you have? None. My lad, I would like to prove to the court today but not only is my client innocent of these scurrilous accusations, but that it is her husband, the husband to whom she has so tirelessly devoted her life these past eight weeks, who is the real villain of the piece. Uh, once you've seen the, the, the compelling evidence, my lad, I'm sure you'll agree that £25 million pounds and a controlling share in her husband's companies is a small price to pay for such sickening abuse at the hands of this philandering sex pest. <laughs> what did he say? Lad, I'd like, with your permission, to play you something which has only recently come into our possession. Oh, 
Holland, what is this? Yes, apologies for the shaky camera work, my lad. Perhaps your client could employ a professional next time. Apart from her, of course. You're not a multi-millionaire. Oh, there you are. Yes, not many men can carry off a French basque. And, I mean, what about his reputation? He's got children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Uh, well, let that be a lesson to them. <laughs> what? Do unto others before they get the chance to do it to you? Good one. I was thinking more along the lines of don't ever get married, ever. When you put your name on a piece of paper and suddenly everything you are is theirs. It's asking for trouble. So why do it? Oh, what about if you're in love? Word made up by greetings card companies. Let's shift more product. Love is a temporary illness cured by marriage. Mm. Ambrose Bierce. Mm. Petra! Harry! Heard about your victory over all vinegar tits this morning. Congratulations. You haven't forgotten about our little date this afternoon? 2.30. Two. Mm. Oh, Harry. If by some horrendous twist of fate I don't walk out of that courtroom with my ex-husband's balls and my Prada purse, you can kiss goodbye to any dreams you may have of making QC. <laughs> 2 p.m. Jeremy, how lovely. Doesn't it bother you? What? You, your... And don't take this the wrong way, morally bankrupt. I am deeply hurt. You, lesbian, out. Uh, um, the whole mic calls for ten minutes, will you? Drink. You are, without exception, the most unscrupulous, devious, egotistical, um... Morally bankrupt. Sanctimonious little piece of shit that I have ever had the misfortune to come across in all my years of practicing law. God, you're good. Let's <laughs> make that half an hour, Laura. <sighs> all rise. So, what do we have this afternoon? Hailing and hailing. Seen you many times in this court before Petra, but never on the receiving end of a googly. Ah, Mr. Holland looks as if you've won the toss. If you'd care to step up to the crease. Thank you, my lad. I believe in marriage. After all, if there was no marriage, there'd be no divorce, and I'd have to get myself a real job. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, <clears throat> I believe marriage to be a sacred institution. Mm. The coming together of two like-minded souls with one single aim. To spend the rest of their lives together. That uh, wasn't it, um, Ambrose Bierce who said, love is a temporary illness cured by marriage. Mr. Holland. <laughs> Mr. Holland. <sighs> if this is another one of your googlies, Mr. Holland. Harry! <sighs> well, what have you to say for yourself? Harry! <gasps> Harry? No. Oh, oh, Harry! Harry! St. Mary's Hospital. Hmm. 
My name is Dr. Kramer. Well, uh, you're bound to feel some discomfort after an operation. Operation? You suffered a major heart attack. So major, in fact, that we had to replace your heart with a new one. Yeah. Give me a new heart. Well, it's uh, slightly more complicated than that, but uh, yes. You are a very lucky man, Harry. You were a train crash just waiting to happen. Better now than further down the line. Of course, there are no guarantees. Nothing is 100%. The heart still might not take, but all the indications so far are excellent. Oh, by the way, Harry, uh, do you have your credit card with you? You're out of here next week? Yeah. Good. I mean, you're a very valuable asset. Hmm? To the chambers. Well. Oh, um, Laura's idea. Hmm. I didn't know you were allergic. <laughs> did I. You're a changed man. So, how did the divorce go? It didn't. Oh. I postponed the hearing. See, uh, uh, I couldn't think of anyone else I'd rather have kick my husband in the cojones. <laughs> Financially speaking. Mm. <clears throat> So, look, I mean, you know, whenever you're ready, the job's still yours. Oh. Um, best put those in water. Your favorite. <laughs> uh, funny, I don't remember seeing you ever while I was in hospital. Didn't want to raise your blood pressure. The medical bollocks out of the way. Let's get on with the internal. Mm. Mm. Take this new heart of yours for a spin. Uh, mm. There you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Are you sure it was just your heart they replaced? Mm. Um, just give us a moment. What are you doing? Uh, thinking. What about? Something sexy. About something right here in front of you. Mm. Hmm? Oh. It's only because I'm out of practice, I hope. Where are you going? Harry, if I wanted to not have sex, I would have stayed at home with my husband. Seems a shame to waste a whole evening. I mean, maybe we could do something else. Like what? I don't know, talk? <sighs> but I don't know the first thing about you. I mean, what do you like to do? Do you, do you like opera? Oh, God! What? Well, this is meant to be a casual affair. It was. It is. Yeah, no strings, just sex. What's the matter with talking? You'll be telling me you love me next. No, I swear. I mean, I don't even find you attractive. Do you know? You're sick. Mm. You have to take this thing out of me. 
What? I think whoever this heart once belonged to, I know this sounds ridiculous, but it's kind of changed me. That's impossible. Well, is it? What I loved two months ago, I now hate. Guinness. Guinness? Guinness and, and flowers, look. I mean, I've never been allergic. I've never been allergic, allergic to anything in my life. And that's not the worst of it. I haven't told you what happened today. First day back at work. Nothing too taxing. Routine divorce case. Sullivan versus Sullivan. And you would have my client's son deprived of the one thing he loves most in the world. The one thing he looks forward to when he comes home from school. The one constant in his young, troubled life. Pedro. So you were moved by a particularly sad story. A natural human reaction. I'm a barrister. The last thing I need to be is human. It wouldn't be so bad if I could get a decent night's sleep, but I keep having these dreams. No, oh, dreams. Tell me. Well, I'm, I'm traveling. There's a corner, sea, mountains, and I crash. You crash? Yeah. Have you ever been in an accident? Hmm? No. And this place, do you recognize it? Well, that's just it. It's, it's so vivid. It feels so familiar, like I'm home. But I've never actually seen it before in my life. What, what is it? What do you know? You know something, don't you? No. Who was he? Who was the donor? I don't know. But you could find out. No. Don't you see, if I could find out who the donor was, what he... I'm sorry, Harry. <sighs> um... You're married, Mr. Kramer. Oh, yes. She probably wouldn't be too keen to learn about the nurse you've been knocking off on Ward 6, then. They never told me his name. Just tell me where he came from. I can't. Do the words Kramer versus Kramer mean anything to you? No, I mean I really can't. I can't pronounce it. You're going where? Scotland. What? Uh, that sort of bit of country air do me good. Harry, I have my divorce hearing on Friday. You should be here, preparing for the case, not swanning around the country. If I lose, my husband gets everything. Do you hear me? Everything! Don't worry, I'll be back for your divorce. I promise. You better be. Or it won't be his balls in my Prada purse. Um, 
Know of any good hotels around here? Aye. Incredible. Hello there. Hi. What can I get you? Um, latte. Cappuccino. Or maybe just a scotch. Aye. Oh, and uh, room if you got one. I'd love to help you there. Great. But I can't. We're closed for the season. I make Norton's. Bed and breakfast cross the way. The gentlemen will be looking for something classier than that, though. Aye, Hans haven't done a day's honest graft in their life. He'll be wanting his own bathroom at the very least. Uh, McNaughton's sounds perfect. They're across the way. State as you please, then right. Purple door. Thanks. Hello? Hi. Is your mum or dad in? Sean? Used to be me and my husband's room. I can charge more when I rent out the best room. Best room? Uh, no, it's very nice. Um, bijou. Oh, mind your head. You here in business, Mr. Holland? No. Holiday? No. Okay. Breakfast at 7.30. Gives you an hour to get some beauty sleep. What do you say? Nothing. Have we... Have you stayed here before? God, no. Uh, uh, no, I, I don't believe I have. Hmm. Incredible. Ow. This is Radio Sky, your caring, caring station. Where if you listen to us, we listen to you. The best in the Northwest. And for those of you just joining us, a very good morning to each other. Morning. Sir. I'm delighted to know that you're waking up to a bright and busy day with only a slight chance of a shower in the afternoon. However, tomorrow Bits. isn't the most so good. But as we now see in Sky, let's cross that new bridge. Your Where name, Harry? They still follow it. Yes. Sean, you're to stare. You're, uh, 
Husband not around. Dad's upstairs. Boys, it's about time for your bus. Come on, get your things. Come on, put your clothes on. Thomas, put it on. You know, like that. Can't imagine why. You know, many a poor African would be glad of that. I suggest you send it to them. Slow this time of year. Ricky Sinclair. Harry Holland. Editor and chief reporter. Actually, the only reporter. <laughs> Wouldn't have thought there'd be that many deaths around here. It wasn't just Bally Antisheen, it was the outlying crofts and farms as well. Not to mention the wee islands. Hmm. You don't mind my asking, Mr. Holland, but what the hell is all this about? I inherited something from them. Just want to thank their relatives. Inherited? Yep. What? I had a heart attack and then a heart transplant. My God! This is amazing! You don't know how long I've waited for a story like this! Yeah, I, I'd rather we kept this between ourselves. Man gives his life to save no, another. You can't tell anyone. I mean, maybe in a couple of days we could come to some arrangement. An exclusive? Yeah. What do you say? You've got yourself a deal, Mr. Holland. Meet me in the pub at two. I'll see what I can come up with. Your sister says she's coming down with the flu. Oh, no, she stopped seeing that Argentinian. You owe £42.50 electricity. Oh, yeah, yeah. And your two month. Oh. Three months behind in your rent. That's bro, Teresa. Do you know who you're going to Jean's wake with yet? Oh. Look, I don't like dogs. They don't like me. Who's the suit? What part of bugger and off do you not understand? Arrived this morning, staying over at the McNaughton's. Amanda's? Hi. You want to play fetch? Fetch this. As it comes. Thanks. Uh. Uh. Hey! <laughs> Tom, Hi. calm down now. I figured it probably wasn't him. 
Next, there's Hamish McLeod, flattened by a steamroller. Probably not him either. McNaughton. Is that? Tom McNaughton. Husband of Amanda, father of Thomas and Sean. Eh? Tommy ran the ferry to the islands, crashed on his way back from Inverness. Road accident? Aye. In a coma, best part of six weeks. But he never came round. Could have at least got me a heart in a 40% tax bracket. That's my son. He wanted to be scattered over in the loch. Amanda keeps saying she's going to do it, but... Well, I guess she's not quite ready yet. Are you planning on staying here long, Mr Holland? Uh, just until I've fixed the bike. Shame. Mm, well, what have we got here? That's the fairing, Thomas. We better be careful with that. I don't want to scratch it. I thought you might need a man's help. I'm Robert. Harry. I heard. Sooner we get you fixed, sooner we can get you on your way. It'll be no use. It needs a new part thing. Extremely rare. And overpriced by the looks of it. I gather that's your hairdryer on wheels outside. It may be old and rusty. At least you can still ride it. Why bother when you can walk faster? It's not the size of the ship, it's the skill of the captain. If you hear a rocking, don't come a knocking. Are we still talking about our bikes? Uh, can I sit on it? No, I don't think that'd be a good idea, Yeah, Thomas, of course you can. Cool. Careful, though. Took a lot of little Italian men a long time to mind the paint work. <laughs> Your hands, dinner's almost ready. I tried to tell Amanda, I'm sorry. Yeah, they're only sitting on it, the engine wasn't even. People dine those things. Are you still up for a drink tonight, Robbie? Aye. What did I tell you about motorbikes? Tend not to waste food round here. You seen fits today, boys. <clears throat> well, one good thing about having a dead husband, I've got some colour back in the place. Tom was allergic. <laughs> Sorry. They're not mine. They're yours. I'm gonna go out and look for the dog. Yeah, I'll come with you. Sit! 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 I wonder where he's got to. Mind how you go. Thank you. So, what do you do back in London, Mr Holland, when you're not stealing women's underclothes, that is? I'm a divorce lawyer. Really? Yeah. Well, if you're hoping to drum up business, you've come to the wrong place. Folks tend to get married for life around here. Mind the ditch. Hmm? Oh. Fitz! Here, dog! Fitz! Fitz! What is that dog? He was my husband's idea. 
Thought you'd be good for the boys. Yes, yes, um... Must be tough not having a man about the place. Have you got kids, Mr. Holland? <laughs> God, no. So how would you know? Right. So, um, what was he like? Your husband? Oh, if you ask the boys, they'll tell you that he discovered the South Pole. Owen, he was the first man to climb Everest. Tom never went more than 50 yards from his own front door. You must think that's a pathetic kind of life, don't you, Mr. Holland? Not enough internet access and cafe lattice for you. You feeling better now? Hmm? I saw the pills in your room. Serious, was it? For a while. Fitz! Oh! So, tell me, Tom, it, we should head back. Hello? Hello? Are you all right? You know, if you look at the sky from here, you could be anywhere in the world. Rome, Paris, even London. You know, it started raining. <laughs> I, I like the rain. Makes everything feel fresh, shiny new. Like life starting over. <laughs> Amanda! I? You fit then! I! Robert and I are going for a drink. You're welcome to join us. Three's a crowd. Aye. You remind me of someone. Statements, checkbooks, pens. Aha! <laughs> hmm. Air slide. Buggering, boggy shit pants. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Show me something. Hmm. An empty jar. How very fascinating. It's got Dad's breath in it. His what? Got it from when he was in the hospital. say man's breath was the soul and so as long as you've got that then the person's never really dead we did it in history gran says sean's got the sight the sight i can see things folk can't stuff that happens before it happens can't tell me next week's lottery numbers, can he? Well, look, um, I better, uh, thanks. 
Good night. Dispatch Raider. Mm. Thanks. I'm not him. Maybe do it more often. Cool. Times. Well, good night, Robert. Night. Amanda. Well, thanks for walking me home. You're welcome. Hi. This in my room. Nettle and cucumber tonic. For your flower allergy, my son swore by it. Cure your hemorrhoids as well. So he was never tempted to uh, move away, your son? I mean, it's all a bit hand to mouth living around here, isn't it? Not much opportunity to make something of your life. Depends what you mean by make. Well, you know. Money. Aye. Ah, I dare say a little more wouldn't have gone amiss. But sometimes there's more important things in life. Hmm. Like what? Oh, like lying on the beach in the dead of night, watching the merry dancers, sky changing before your very eyes, a million different colours, and sex. I used to quite enjoy sex. And the monkeys. Ha <laughs> now, they were a good band. Of course, if you want to know more about my son, you'd be wise to ask his best friend. We went to school together. So you must have um, known him better than almost anyone, then. Hi. All this. Apart from Amanda, of course. You've got to admire her, haven't you? Raising two children on her own without Mr. any... Mr. Holland, I know why you're here. You do? Aye. You're working for the insurance company, are you not? Is it that obvious? Why don't you just leave the poor lass alone? She's been through enough. It was an accident. Tom! Of course, Tom. What else would we be talking about? Yes, sorry, of course. Hell is... It's a fish, Mr. Holland. Yeah. What do you think it is? I think I can handle a small fish. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> ah! People daft enough to take a bit this time of year. Yeah, well, Robert was teaching me how to fish, wasn't he? Well, it was nice of him. Uh, wasn't it? But maybe oh. next time you want to stay on the land. If you need spare towels, you'll get them in the cupboard on the, the landing. 
Isn't that where most people normally keep them? Here. Look about my husband's size. Here. Thank you. I'll get you a coffee. Oh, I found that last night. Tom bought me it. Coffee. Seems pretty fond of you, Robert. Was my husband's best friend. Known each other since they were wee boys. Meant to be a wee bit protective. So more of a brother and sister, then? Aye. Yes, you're right. Not really me, is it? No, you look very... Do you take sugar? No. Sweet enough as the same goes. I haven't made this thing. Needs some lessons in knitting. I made it. Oh, I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to... Uh... <laughs> Right, yes, very good. <laughs> that was my grandma. If you could speak to him now, what would you say? What? Tom, if he was standing here right now. He's not, though, is he? No, but if he was. <laughs> what is this? I'm just curious. Look, you might like fantasy, Mr. Holland, but round here we prefer reality. But if he was? I'm not in for games, Mr. Holland. Just humour me. I'm only interested... How dare you promise me the world and leave me with nothing! You didn't even have to go to Inverness. You only went because we had some stupid argument and you wanted to buy me a new dress to make it up to me. I look like someone that goes in for fancy skirts and hair slides. Because of that, I have to live in this drafty, half-finished house. Try to be mum and dad to two wee boys. Taking on slimy city types with streaks in their hair. I didn't even get to say goodbye, you selfish stupid prick. I told them to leave that thing alone. Tell you those things are dangerous. Go on, get in. Now. And I suppose you told them they could play in that, did you? No, but they're kids. Now, what would you know about them? I know you treat them like it's their fault their dad died. I am protecting them. No, you're protecting yourself. Well, you're not worried if they get hurt, you're just worried that if they do, you will. I only ever let one man speak to me like that, and he's dead. She kissed you. And you think you're turning into Tom McNaughton? Yeah, but saying it out loud doesn't make it sound any less stupid. Believe me, I've tried. So what do you think? What do I think? I think the story just gets better and better. What? Sure, the other person was good. Human interest, laddie da. But this, this is my ticket out of this one-horse town. No, I meant about me. You? You knew him, Ricky. Do I remind you of Tom? Well, you don't look like him, if that's what you mean. I used to have a good life, you know. No worries, quarter mill a year, plus bonuses. Great apartment. And they're all the women. Amanda! What? Tom's wife. Yes, what about her? He was devoted to Amanda. So if you're really him, you'll feel the same way about her. But you don't, right? Right. There you go. You can't be him, then.
final demand for the electric, and that seed catalogue you ordered, and one from your Aunt Lucy in New Zealand. Oh, it seems she didn't have mumps after all. Oh, and there's something here for that new lodger of yours. Um, this came for you this morning. It must be the bit that you ordered for the bike, eh? Yes. Well, I guess that means that you believe in us soon. No, I mean, there's no reason to stay. No. Good. I, I mean, for you. Well, I'll... <laughs> See you in the morning. Uh, Amanda. Mm. I have a tendency to say stupid things sometimes. I, I think there's a medical term for it. No, I needed to hear it. Oh. Is there a Mrs. Holland? No. Oh, that was quick. Um, either you're lying or it's a touchy subject. <laughs> no, it's not a touchy subject. I just don't really see what the big deal is about marriage. Oh. Well, maybe one day, if you're lucky enough, you'll find out. Well, like you and Robert. He would make a good father for the boys. How about the lover? Why do you need a man anyway? I mean, really, two people spending the rest of their lives together. Why is that normal? No, you don't believe there's a special someone out there for you? I think there's several special someones out there. Uh-huh. So, or one door closes, another one opens. Who's that, eh? Well, my experience, that door's a tinsy smack in the back of the head. Good night. What does that mean? What does what mean? Doors smacking me on the back of the head. I was talking about me. No, you weren't. All right, I'm afraid of being my own and you're afraid of commitment. There, you happy? I'm not afraid of commitment, I'm just... Frightened, terrified, petrified. <laughs> you're undressing. That's what you do before you get to bed. And what are you doing? Hmm? Oh. Well, maybe I am... Maybe I am afraid of commitment, but... You want to know why? No, but I've got a funny feeling you're going to tell me anyway. Because I'd rather be a slimy city type that's afraid of commitment than turn into this uptight, unemotional pain in the arse that you so clearly delight in being. Have you finished? Yes. Good. Because at least I've been in love, Mr Holland. But then you wouldn't know what that felt like, would you? Not ever having experienced it. Finished? Yes. Good. <laughs> Grand's party today, isn't it, Grand? Hi. You're more than welcome to join us, Mr. Holland. You can't. Mr. Holland has to leave. Now that he's fixed his bike, he's got no good reason to hang around. Well, provided I'm back by Friday, um, I'd be honoured. Yes! Oh, marvellous. It'll be a grand beer. It's at the lighthouse across the bay.
occasion? Is it her birthday or something? It's her funeral party. What? Well, up here, some of the older people light up the wake while they're still alive. Why miss out on a good party, eh? <laughs> Are you fit, lass? Here. Oh, can't. <laughs> Scotch, as oh. it comes. Thanks. Cheers. Slange. Yep. the dance floor, Mr. Holland. Just waiting for the right girl to come along, Jane. friend would like to join in. Oh, no, Robert, that's hardly fair. No, that's all right. It's only a dance, isn't it? After all, how difficult can that be? They say it's the most complicated reel ever devised. See, it was any competition for Tom. Ladies and gentlemen, Amanda? would you kindly grace the floor? 
for the real of the 49. Look on the bright side. If you make a complete tit of yourself, at least you'll know you're definitely not him. You're such a comfort, Ricky. You think because you have something of my son inside of you, that makes you him. How did you... Maybe you share a few characteristics, but that's all they are. Like dancing the reel of the 49th. <laughs> that was somewhat strange, I'll admit. But then, doesn't love make us all do strange things? Love? Aye. Love. 
Mr. Holland. Used to be very fashionable in my day. You sound so sure. You think a mother wouldn't recognize her own son? So what was the argument about? When? The day Tom died, he said you argued. <sighs> I told him that I wanted more. His horizons never went further than the lighthouse over there. He had his reasons. Providing for a family, for one thing. <sighs> Should have been me buying him new clothes. Typical Tom. I was apologizing, even when it wasn't his fault. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Yeah, the doctor said I should take things easy. I don't think Darcy on the 49th is quite what he had in mind. <laughs> Shit, what the hell's that? Wow. Merry dancers. They say that they appear every time a good man enters heaven. Kind of pretty, huh? It's gorgeous. <sighs> Remember you asked me if there was anything I could say to him, what would it be? I think I know what I would say to him now. I tell him. I love him. And I miss him more than I thought was humanly possible. But you're gone now and I can't bring you back. And there's no point wishing things were different because they never will be. You know, I thought you reminded me of him. It wasn't him that you reminded me of. It was a feeling that I had with him. I never thought that I would feel that again. Amanda, look, um... I know I'm not the man of your dreams, Amanda. Far from it, in fact. But I swear no man will love you more today, tomorrow, and for the rest of your life. Robert. Amanda, please. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife? Flattered. I'm really, really flattered. That doesn't sound like a yes, Amanda. What's well, not? I 
At least I didn't make myself look foolish. <laughs> It's him, isn't it? Harry. He's a good man. The sort that makes your heart beat faster. I'm open. Aye. That's a feeling worth having. I'm not. Come on, lads. I can't not see it, Amanda. And believe me, it's not because I wish you ill. But I know why he's here. Jean's taking the boys down the beach. I thought we'd get up breakfast in bed. Amanda. Obviously not. I thought after last night, and then again this morning. It last night was. Wonderful. Yes. And here was me thinking that you were right. There was more than one special person out there in the world. Oh, I didn't come here expecting... Why did you come here? Robert thinks that you're from the insurance company. Yes, he's wrong. So why would he say such a thing? Because I told him that I was. Why? I, I don't understand. Look, it's just better if I go. We've had a great time, haven't we? Why can't we just be happy with that? Why won't you tell me? Just drop it, will you? You're married. No. You got a girlfriend. No. Well, no, but that's not the reason. Why can't you just leave things alone? Because I look. I won't give up that easily when something's worth fighting for. Why won't you tell me? You said I reminded you of Tom. Before he died, you would have signed a form. You were his next of kin. He was an organ donor. His heart, my scar. I mean, after the operation, it was like I wasn't me anymore. I just wanted to find out the truth, that's all. There was no intention of... So the dance... Tom... Show me. Amanda. Show me!
Well. That's good. Yep. <clears throat> Very good. Best thing I've written since I got here. Pity no one's gonna read it. Ah, wouldn't it be fair on the kids now, would it? <laughs> Maybe you should think about a different profession, Ricky. You uh, lack the killer instinct to be a good journalist. I'll see you around. Harry. Thanks. you liked us. I do. Just not as much as London. I'm not your dad, Thomas. I know that. I'm not stupid. I can't stay. What say you send me on my way with a wordy farewell? Just one word, one teeny weeny word. Bugger off. to stay. I bet he would have done, too. It's not as simple as that. It's as simple as you want it to be. You don't understand. I know. Everything. Do you want to spend the rest of your life alone? I loved Tom. We both did. But life goes on. If you're lucky. Welcome back, Harry. You're beginning to make a habit of this. You've been given a second chance, Harry. The heart rejected you. It happens uh, occasionally. You removed it? Yes. You got your wish, Harry. A new heart. Oh, uh, 
Looks like you got an admirer. I believe in marriage. After all, if there was no marriage, there'd be no divorce, and I'd have to find myself a real job. <laughs> but seriously, I believe that marriage is a sacred institution. The coming together of two like-minded souls with one single aim, to spend the rest of their lives together. How they do it, God only knows. I know. I know I couldn't. But that doesn't mean to say I don't recognize the value of its currency in this morally bankrupt world in which we live. Mr. Holland? Mr. Holland, are you with us? Harry. What? Your client, Mr. Holland. My client, yes. My client. Let me tell you a little bit about my client. She's, um... wrong. Uh, this man, her husband, um, I know him. And, uh, believe me, he couldn't be unfaithful to her. He loves her too much. And let me tell you something, she's not actually worth it. All those nights you thought she was working late? Lies. She was with me. I'd like to say that we were lovers, but you have to have had feelings for someone first to qualify for that. pronounce you. Stop! It's Harry, everyone! Oh, um, look, I'm uh, sorry, Robert, but uh, this isn't right. I, I can't let you go through with this. Harry! Uh, Ricky, please, I have to say this. Um, would it be possible you could all just give us a few minutes? Um, no! Um, 
Right, well, uh, you know, I used to think that Tom McNaughton was a loser. Oh, he didn't have any money, he, he lived in a crappy house and a crappy oh, life. No. I, I was wrong, uh, I, because Tom McNaughton was not a loser. He was the richest man I never met. He had something that I could only ever dream of possessing. He was married to Amanda. Oh. You can't marry Robert. Uh, Harry? And no, it's not because Harry. I love you and want to spend every breath of my life with you, although that would be rather good too. It's just, don't marry him. Please, I, I beg of you. Most humbly, because as good and as fine a man as Robert is, you know in your heart that he's not the right man for you. And at the end of the day, that's the only real decision we ever have to make. Isn't that it? You're right. Oh, I'm sorry, Robert. Oh. Teresa, wait! Of course, I could be wrong. Bridegroom jilted at the altar. Pandemonium ensues. Gold dust. Ah. Oh. Harry. Uh. Harry. Uh, uh. Harry. Mm -hmm. You okay? Mm. You didn't marry him then? Decided I didn't need a man after all. Oh. Well, congratulations. <laughs> I thought you said you didn't give up that easily. If something's worth fighting for. Oh, it is. It really is. You don't know of any good hotels around here, do you?
Bye-bye.